Here's one of the best ways you can get lean, burn fat, and build muscle at home. Check this out. Get a pull-up bar and something for push-ups. And throughout the day, do some pull-ups, do some push-ups, and do some squats. Low to moderate intensity. That's right. You're practicing the exercises all day long. If you do it too hard, it won't work. It needs to be moderate intensity. But if you do it every single day, watch what happens to your body. This may be one of the secrets that fitness people never talk about. We call that low-tech high effect. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Was it greasing the groove. Uh, greasing the groove. Yeah, what's his name? What was his name? Pavel. Yeah, he talked mm -hmm. about that. I, th I think you get pretty far with this. Uh, the limiting factor is the legs. Of course. Mm -hmm. But I think between pull-ups and push-ups, you can make that difficult enough with relatively no weight. And even if you did add like a little weight on your waist for pulling up to get and build a good amount of muscle from those two movements. Mm -hmm. Legs get you started, but then... You technically, because you didn't say this, but you technically go to pistols. Totally, and yeah. You split can, stance, you could do a lot. Of. Yeah, but so, I mean, if you think of the average person, strength. without even you know trying to modify, or average person like uh, you know do a couple pull ups, do ten push ups, you know thirty body weight squats, do that like four times a day. Oh yeah, consistently. I mean, I mean, you'll start seeing, and people they they don't think it works because it's not super intense. Like, well, I could do. You know, why wouldn't I do, you know, 30 push-ups? Why instead of just do 10? Just do 10, but do it throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And then watch what happens. Watch what happens to your health, your fitness. This was something that I noticed. This is how, how I came up with trigger sessions early on, is I noticed with blue-collar workers, their their hands and their forearms, and, you know, if they were uh, letter carriers or calves, they were so muscular, and, and they didn't, it's not like you trained to failure. They just worked them all day long, every single day. Yeah. And after the first six months, they probably were never sore again, uh, not in the same way, but they had well-developed body parts that were attributed to the movements they did. And I think uh, this is kind of the way the body evolved yeah. to move. I think if you do this, you'll find some pretty remarkable results. And then if you're advanced, combine this with your workout. With so if weight. you're already advanced, already going to the gym, do this with a certain exercises throughout the day and watch what happens. It's a continuous signal and, and you recover better than any of the other methods. It's kind of funny because we've had to adapt because of our work schedule and because of the way we've structured our day uh, where we're so sedentary. And then we have this one opportune hour, you know, throughout the day. Like, how do we maximize everything yeah. in this one hour of time? Uh, and it's just so much... It, it our body just does so much better when you spread it out throughout the day. It's just we don't have that sort of convenience like That's we right. did back in the day. So you bringing this up uh, reminds me of something I actually wanted to bring up today uh, in relation to our GLP one coaching. So for the audience um, that doesn't know that we we've officially launched and started, where by the time this airs, it'll be about a week and a half, but it's only about a week in of uh, something that is really, I find very interesting uh, for us, right? We've, yeah. we've, mm -hmm. we've got 50 people that are all uh, going through our GLP-1 um, uh, program that are all on a GLP-1. And I mean, every, all different- Every experience is super unique. Different ages, different body types, different challenges, struggles. I wanted to ask you guys, uh, what are some things that you notice or see already? And for me- that what you're talking about right now is one of the things I noticed it's totally right away was uh, people were like, this is so little volume mm -hmm. and people wanted to do, want to do so much more. Yeah. And I mean, and I didn't think that was going to happen with this group, I guess maybe because I thought that their, their thing was going to be weight loss, that they don't, their appetites were going to be so low that, Oh, they're going to get it, understand it. But I find we're in that same predicament uh, even with this group of people. A hundred percent. I, I, people, uh, you could divide my career as a trainer in half. Like there's a, there's a first part and a second part. And the second part is when I really got it. The first part is when I missed a lot. Now I cared the whole time. So the whole time I cared about my clients. I wanted to help them. It's just, there was a shift, uh, maybe five to five, seven years in where I really started to figure things out. And the, and here's the big difference in the early days. Uh, if a client felt kind of off, uh, if they hurt a little bit or whatever, they would call to cancel the workout. Towards the the second half, if a client felt off, they'd call me to see if they could come in because mm -hmm. they would feel better after the workout than they did before. The first half, people would comment after their you know initial workouts and say things like, oh my God, I could barely move. The second half, people would comment and say, I feel like I barely worked out. I actually kind of feel kind of good. In the second half, I was far superior in terms of getting people results getting them consistent, getting their body to respond. 
uh, we overdo it. We all we often often overdo it, and a lot of it has to do with because we glamorize the the torture and the pain. And what happens when you go on social media is you see fitness fanatics working out. And now when I work out, I need to work out at a certain intensity to get my body to improve <clears throat> any further, maintain my health. I don't necessarily, but if I want to go any further, my workout's going to look pretty pretty hardcore. But for most people, especially when you first get started, uh, it doesn't look anything like that at all. And yeah. so people have no idea. So when they hear the kind of advice, like I said, which is, you know, do a few push-ups, a few body weights, they're like, well, that's easy. I'll just do more. I'll, I'll do way more. I barely feel anything. Yeah. You're not supposed we'll to. do all the weighted vests. Yes. It, you won't get there any faster if you do that. In fact, you'll get there slower. You have to uh, stimulate your body to progress and adapt, not force it. I know we always say force because uh, I, I see where you could get that idea. But then when we think force, we think we got to beat the shit out of ourselves. I think there's it's a not part. The case. I think there's a part too that so many people miss. Most people that hired you, most not all, but most people that hired you were looking for general weight loss, right? Body fat. They want to reduce their body most fat common. percentage. Most that's most common thing you get. And the other part of this, Sal, that is uh, that I think a lot of these clients aren't factoring in is that you're also in a caloric deficit. You, you just stuck. You stack the cards against yourself. Right. And so this idea, like, and, and so you, you have that, and then you have like, to your point about the, the, in the fitness space, you have a lot of these trainers and coaches that are speaking to themselves and their peers about progressive overload and fa failure training and how, how important it is that we stress the body that hard in order to make it grow and adapt. And so you hear that coming from really intelligent, smart people. So this must be the truth. And then here you are this either newbie or or relatively new person to strength training and you got all this weight to lose and you hear these people saying that and so therefore you think like this can't be enough i got to do more i'm not being cr and it's like you don't understand like not only is it is, is it not how you're supposed to be training but then you add in the fact that you're in a calorie deficit like that you're not giving the body the building blocks in order to go out and go build muscle so the so the information you're hearing about uh, failure training to stimulate growth. It's even more inaccurate. Yeah. It's <laughs> even more inaccurate for you yeah. because you're not that person. You're not there yet right now. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, there, there's some real great perks about being early on in this game is that it doesn't take very much to stimulate the body mm -hmm. to get it to respond, but it is very easy to overdo it or overcorrect. And I think, and then here we are in this example. Again, I, I guess I thought, because we are going to be dealing with these people that were mostly most for most people drop trying to drop a significant amount of weight, they'd be in a different mindset. They would actually probably really appreciate like, oh, the workouts oh. aren't crazy intense. <laughs> but of course, that was the first. I know, should have known, right? I, I mean, was that not the one? I, first I assumed the same, which was yeah, it was actually surprising on some level. But it's like, uh, but then it's like, duh, like and everybody coming in that wants to lose weight, like they're in this mad hustle to get this we, done. We highly motivated. Them. We even told them you're gonna think it's too easy yeah when you first get started the workout's gonna feel like they're not that hard but trust the pro this is why being an effective trainer so much hinges on your ability to get your client to trust you because they have to because everybody everyone else tells them it's supposed to be this way i'm supposed to kill myself otherwise this is going to happen and in the past if i made any progress at all it was because i literally tortured myself how can this possibly be true and it's like you got to do something different it didn't work before it didn't work before because you did it wrong. So when it comes to getting your body to progress, it's about the right dose. And, and the truth is the right dose is typically a lot less than you think. Even when you're, this look, this is even true for a fitness fanatic who's consistent. You've been working out for years and years and years and super consistent. Here's what your year of workouts should look like. It's mostly coasting, interrupted by small bursts of, of sprints, yeah. small bursts of intensity. So it's like, three months of kind of treating my body well, then I'll do like four weeks or three weeks of hardcore training. Then I'll do another month or two months of coasting, then maybe another two weeks. That's what it should look like. Otherwise, you injure yourself, overtrain, and you go backwards. And if you talk to anybody who's been doing this for a long time, ask them the truth and they'll tell you, yeah, probably that's what it, that's what it looks like. It looks like I follow this routine, feel good, and then I have these moments where everything's hitting, I'm getting good sleep, my diet's perfect, I feel great, and I can stretch myself a little further. It's just how the body adapts and if you try to go against how the body adapts, no one's ever won a battle against their body. I'm just yeah. like, right now, your body will win that battle. It'll just keep getting louder, and eventually the signals get so loud that you, you can't ignore them. So, you know, the advice of the little bit of movement throughout the day, it's funny because during, uh, during the pandemic, when people were locked in their homes, essentially, 
I was telling people to do this as a way to help their mental state. And I, I would get messages from people like, I got in better shape. Yeah. And he told me to break up my workouts to make it's my day a byproduct. I'm not go, uh, stronger. Yeah. Not make me feel crazy because I was at home all day, but I, I did what you said. And I did 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, 20 minutes in the evening. I think I got better results doing that. It's like, yeah, the body works yeah. really great. Yeah. When you treat the way it's supposed it's optimal to. optimal like that, yeah. yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. It's any crazy. any predictions you guys have for this group, like based off of what we're kind of, I mean, it's early, right? We're only yeah. a weekend yep. and uh, we're just getting started with this group. Like any predictions? Just any pre some hard lessons. As yeah. you say, anything yeah. you guys think is going to be a challenge for us or what do you see happening like with this group? I think that's the biggest one. I think you're also going to see people comparing themselves to each other. Like, sure. Wait, that yeah. person- Too quick, you know, this. some it's, people- It's yeah. not doing it for me type of deal. I think similar challenges to what we've experienced, but maybe- their expectations are different because they're on a GLP-1. Like maybe they're not going to encounter some of the same challenges, but I think a lot of the challenges will be the same, except for maybe that, you know, obviously the hunger signal. It's, so it's such a psychological weaker. battle in there. Always. I mean, and it's really amounts to their goals to lose size. And I don't think that, although they, they'll say out loud they want to lose body fat, I don't think they really, you know, like psychologically discern whether or not it's fat or muscle or of like course. overall mass, uh, which once they get to that headspace and realize, you know, that preserving muscle is going to set them up so much better for a long-term lasting result. I think, you know, hopefully we can kind of keep educating and bringing in speakers and, and uh, keep reassuring them that this is the plan uh, and we'll get buy-in. But yeah, it's going to take a lot of work. I think so. So I see, I've noticed a, a, a common thing. It's still early for me because by no means do I think I'm a GLP-1 trainer expert guy yet, but I've gotten it between family, myself, and some friends now seeing these clients go through. There is a common thing that everybody knows about, I feel like on the internet here, is like the, the, the distress that you can potentially get from it. One of the things that, uh, you know, where it's messing with someone's digestive system, right? Where they, they feel upset or- it's, it's Oh, like, sure. Oh, yeah. Beginning stages. Yeah. Two things I've, I've noticed are very common. Uh, one, early, it's early. According to Dr. Seeds, it's like, you know, weeks one through six. And mm -hmm. typically after that, everybody seems to be really good. The other thing that I've also noticed too is that uh, if I can get that person to rotate or change some of their food choices, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. There seems to be something going on sometimes where a client is noticing it and then having them like, you know what, let's try this food instead. And mm -hmm. then they don't notice it anymore. So what I'm curious is that if if people start to like, because this is hard and you guys know this, right? Like when you find out you got gut issues for the first time, right? And Or you come to the realization. Yeah, you come to the realization, <laughs> right? Because you're yeah, so you're much so many people in my experience with clients uh are in including my including myself actually, you know, are in denial of it, it can't be that food. Yeah. You know, you just don't, it's so regular in your diet. It's something you love, whatever it may, or even it falls in the category of healthy foods. And so there's all these, these reasons why you just can't wrap your brain around that can't be bothering my gut or my digestive system. And so you accept or you, then you, oh, I want to put blame on this thing mm -hmm. or your diet or your program mm -hmm. versus like, maybe this is just an even louder sign to you that these food choices that you're still continuing to have are just not ideal for you. And I'm not saying they're not healthy because maybe for somebody else, they would be healthy, but they obviously are, your body is struggling to digest them. And, and now you notice this signal even louder than before. What if we move to this and try that? And what yeah. I've noticed is when I've got a client to do that- it Makes a big difference. Makes a big difference. That's great. Yeah, That's great. yeah there's that a category a of, of, of generally healthy foods and then a subcategory of who, foods that work for you. And they're not, there's crossover, but they're not exactly the same. Yeah. So like, you know, avocado, very healthy. But uh, for example, let's say you have histamine issues. Uh, it might not be a great food for you. It might actually cause gut issues. Um, in fact, I remember it causing an insulin spike in someone I knew with a CGM, which you would think, how would an avocado... Yeah. Cause an insulin spike. It's got zero sugar. It's all fat and fiber. What an individual variance there. It's right? because their body had, had a mild immune reaction. They have a, they had an intolerance to it, and so their liver dumped some 
some sugar as a result. It's like, that's why I feel so crappy when I eat an avocado, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't process it because it's an avocado. It's supposed to be healthy. Yeah. You know, another factor I, I believe Dr. C's brought up too, that was big with, was, you know, if they're too sedentary, it would definitely cause a lot more gastro distress. That's the other thing. Oh, so oh, exercise yeah. is vital for moving. That. Yeah. Moving and, and getting, you know, the digestive system to actually work and contract, you know, involves a lot of, uh, you know, walking, walking, that's, walking. Movement. that's another, I'm glad you pointed that out. Cause that was the other one that's really, is really common is, you know, and, and I, this is what I'm, some of my prediction, it's inevitable, right? We have a group of 50 now, so we're going to have a little bit of everything. You know, there's definitely people that, you know, think, oh, because I, I paid to be in this group and I, oh, I'm taking this thing. It's just going to do it. That's going to do the work. You know what I'm saying? And so there's always going to be mm -hmm. a percentage of people like that. And th that's another great point is like, you have these people that are taking that and they hear all these stories of, oh my God, my friend lost all this weight. I'm going to take it too. And it's like, but then we don't change the diet behaviors. We don't try and get up and move. Like there's these things that it's like, man, when I can get them to that light bulb to go off and they go, okay, yeah, I'm open to changing these foods or, okay, I need to start to make a habit mm -hmm. of like, Hey, I, I'm not going to just sit down and then eat and then not move afterwards. I'm going to make a habit of walking for 10 to 15 minutes. A world of a difference. It, then the number of people that are seeing any sort of negative effects, be even smaller. Yeah, because you got to remember when you when you hear those negative things, yeah, it encompasses shut down, right? all yeah. those people That's right. and all the clients that we knew that are like have these certain you know blocks, you know uh -huh. mental blocks that they can't get past. And so what I'm finding is even the, the the negative stuff that you've heard out in the press and stuff like that, many times I can solve it or help a person by getting them to see that oh, is to be able awesome. to see rotating the food, getting up and moving more, bringing back the intensity on the training. Like those things have been, so, so this is what I'm noticing is some of the common yeah, if you Yeah, if you uh, look at the musculature is involved with walking, like the psoas, for example, some of the other hip flexors, you have the core musculature. Yeah. When you walk- It's right at the bottom. It literally massages and works through the digestive system, especially the psoas, it goes through the body. Mm -hmm. And so walking, you know, and by the way, old cultures do this, they walk- after meals, it does assist in digestion. This is an old, an old, you know, wives' tale, but it's one hundred percent true. So if you have digestive issues, especially with elimination, walks. I mean, not to mention gravity is also working with you too. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you got the the massaging the portion of actually moving and mobilizing yeah. the food, but then also just standing up is creating that gravity. Yeah, don't astronauts have like uh, uh, digestive yes. issues? Yeah. That? That's yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like artificially produce it. Yeah. <laughs> like strap them in and get them walking. That's that's hilarious. Yeah. Dude, I guys, I got to tell you guys what my uh, what my three year old did. Almost four now. Uh, said the other day, this kid cracks me up. We're at the park. And we're hanging out and this little cute little girl's probably right around his age starts walking by and he's playing and he looks over and he goes, look at that baby cutie. What? <laughs> no, he didn't. And it was very no, innocent. It was very his, innocent. It's his first cat call. Yeah, it was very innocent. He's like, look at that baby cutie. Hey, baby and she cute. looked at him and smiled and he's like smiling back at her. And the mom looks at me like, wow. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I don't know, dude. He's, uh, he's an old soul, He's bro. advanced. Yeah, he's, an old, he's, a, he's an old soul. And she was adorable. I oh my God, that's <laughs> hilarious. Baby baby cutie. Cutie. Dude, you know what we went and wow. did this I'm like, week. you won't get away with that for, so, <laughs> for too long, buddy. We, you know yeah. what we did this weekend? We went to... Um, I don't know the name. Maybe Doug could look it up while we're on, on here. Um, on the way to the Chucky House, yeah. uh, when you get past Sacramento, there's a water park to your right. You can't miss it. You always pass it. You, oh, I think I've seen it. You have to see yeah, it. It's massive. It's, it's on the yeah, side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Golf, it's it's got a golf land yes, attached yes, to yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So we went there. Finally went there. It's literally like, I don't know if you guys did. Is Rage it that like, like, like Viking themed? Uh, I think it's... Something it's got like a castle. It's got a castle. It's got. I mean, it's massive. I've seen it. I've it's seen massive. It. And uh, I, I mean, I don't know if you ever did Raging Waters as a kid or. You I know, never so, did. Oh, so you never did any never water? Never did a water have slide. You, you never did a water park? No. What? What? Never. Come on. Serious? Dude, just, we just never took us. Sal's just cabanas only. No, no, I never, I never was taken. Oh I my god! And, then, and as I got older, would you do it? Do you like roller coasters? Yeah, I don't mind. I don't care. You don't care. You don't like them? Uh, no. I mean, they're cool. They're cool. It's not like a, a thing I seek out, but I would Oh, go. my God. Uh, yeah. Doug, did you ever go to Raging Waters or any of these uh, water parks? Have uh, you been any? Yeah, I did. We actually okay. had one up in Washington I used to go to. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, this thing is like, I, the, I was using that as a reference so I could tell you like how over the top it is. Yeah. I mean, it's like that on steroids. It's huge. Right. It's I mean, it's massive. They got some really cool, they have ones where you get in a double tube and it's 
it's a drop you off. Just fall. You yeah. think you're gonna f- tumble over it, so it's so straight down, and then you shoot up the other yeah. side and come back down. There's another one where you you sit you stand in a tube like this, and they count down, and then the floor drops out. Is that it right there? Golfland Sunsplash Roseville. Yes. That's, oh, that's yeah. I did I one exactly of those in is. Florida. Yeah, that was like so insane. Insane. I mean, super cool. We went there for uh, and you did the water slides too. Yeah, yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I got the chance to go for a little bit, but th- this is the point of the story here is that. You know, I was excited. I thought, okay, you know, Max Max likes uh, slides and, and wa- he loves water. And he's got that, I have that one at home where- uh, oh, The blow-up one. Yeah, the blow-up one where he's getting crazy. I don't know if I showed you the other. He's like launching off the top and bouncing. And there's like, the, I told you guys, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, all right. We're, we're, <laughs> we're getting edgy, thing. right? So I'm like, hey, this is going to be the test. You know, we're going here for a birthday party. Let's see what happens. And, you know- I I, I, ha, I I'm working so hard as a dad to not show it on my face when I'm like so let down or yeah. disappointed. You know, I know that's got to be. <laughs> I know there's other dads that can relate to this, right? You don't want, but my son, you know, we're at this crazy place, and uh, you know, we were at the the kitty slide all day. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying we're all that's the, the one like, he did, the, like the to- like the one year olds. You know, where the <laughs> diapers are sliding down, and that's all he wanted to do all day around all this stuff, and I couldn't get. And my buddy is like, it's, it's not even registering for him because he has two wild childs, right? Dude, he's, both his kids yeah. are daredevils and his three-year-old is bombing off the cliff slides. <laughs> like, you know, and he's like, come on, bring Max, let's go. And I'm like, bro, it's not me. Like you think my, my son just don't want to do it, dude. He's not interested. I couldn't get, he would not go. I mean, literally the, the, the biggest slide we went on was the, 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 you know, a four <laughs> oh, foot slide and it had all this crazy stuff and couldn't get him to to go down any of the stuff just not not having it dude not into it not <laughs> wanting to do it and but the park was amazing i mean i got a chance to break off for a little bit katrina watched him why but he had fun yeah he had a good yeah, time that was so that was okay that's the my wife getting on to me right he had a great time why are you yeah. why are you in a bad mood you know why i'm not in a bad mood i'm just let down a little bit you know I was <laughs> hoping that he would get all into it i was like excited that and we could do it together which that was like i thought okay if he I, does it with dad yeah, yeah like i know that he has he has some reservation on things on his own but yeah. typically he'll do some pretty cool stuff with me and so I thought because all these these water slides you can we can ride together in a tube and he was just like I mean the biggest thing I got him to do was the lazy river you know I was like yeah. come on it's not crazy dude I would have never done that at his age <laughs> never it took me forever really yeah I didn't go to a roller coaster till I was fifteen uh, fifteen wow. was the first time wow. I almost messed up uh, with Everett because uh, we went to Boardwalk and you know Ethan was at the age where he he go on anything and so we kind of. We're trying to test him. This is when he was, uh, I don't know, he might have been like eight or something, maybe seven. Uh, but it was just like seeing Ethan like do fine with everything. I'm like, oh, he, he'll just, you know, he's three years young. I always forget he's three years. He's not like, yeah, I just assume year. he's like two and or that's like a big one. Age gap. It's a big age. gap, yeah, you know, yeah. but he always like will, is down to do whatever his brother's yeah, doing. Yeah, at that, at that point, it's almost half their life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> like, we, we put it duh, like, like that. <laughs> this is intimidating as hell, you yeah. know, and he did like the Big Dipper and he, he was freaked out, but he's like, okay. And then there was this one right next to us where it went upside down and did all these like crazy things. And I, I remember getting so angry. I'm like, come on. And he's like, no, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> and I'm just like, why you just did this. And I just it didn't even, I couldn't understand. I'm like, why not? And then we're getting, we're fighting, you know, and I, and I'm saying things and I was like, you know what? I'm, you know, it's fine. You just wait there and we'll be done. I get on there. This strap didn't even fit all the way. I couldn't click it down on my chest. And so I was upside down and like hanging and I could barely breathe. Like this whole time I'm doing this thing, it was like putting all this pressure on my chest. And I was like hating life, you know, <laughs> and just like, oh, getting sick. And then everybody like next to me is getting sick. And it was just an awful ride. I get off. I'm like, you made such a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> good job. But I was like, oh my God, I could have ruined like uh, roller coasters for him just by hammering him oh about it. Oh my know? God. Did I tell you? Uh, so Doug and I went up to Concord and did the simulator. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Was so, it great? So it was freaking awesome. But I puked my brains out on a simulator. So yeah. So, now are you inside a big? It's a. It's a. Uh, no, it's just the TVs wrap around oh, you, so it has. But three... it gives you motion sickness. Though. Yeah, because it's on a D box, oh, so you hell. feel everything. And I knew it's just stupid. I was like, one, I did, Katrina and I were up late the night before, so I didn't get the best night's sleep, and we had to leave early, so I was up early, so I was already like a little feeling off because I was tired. So I was slamming caffeine on an empty stomach. Mm-hmm. So I had a bunch of extra caffeine oh, on an empty stomach. Should have known better there. And then I get there and I haven't eaten yet, and I'm like, oh, I should probably eat something. And I'm like, where do you think Doug? Doug's like, oh, there's a Pete's coffee there. 
So I go in there. I grab a, a lemon cake. <laughs> and I'm like, what a bad bro, I'm Trishious. like halfway through it. And I'm like, I, I shouldn't finish this because I can tell my stomach's going to be bothered just yeah. from that. And none of this is like me thinking about what I'm going to go do. I was like, just how I felt for the day. And then we get in there and we get, we get to Doug and I get to racing. And first of all, way harder than I thought it was going to be way harder. Like it was, uh, I actually thought Doug was gonna get pissed off and quit at first. I could hear him getting, cause we're next to each other. I can hear him talking in there yeah. and I could hear him getting hella frustrated. <laughs> I was like, Oh God, dude, stick with it, Doug. But we did. And it was good after like, but it took about a good half hour of like feeling it out. Really? To, oh yeah. But man, I, and I'm, then I'm, then I'm into it. Like I'm feeling it out. I'm starting to get a little bit of a rhythm, like getting, actually getting laps around without crashing. And, uh, and I'm like, I'm like feeling it. I'm like, still just didn't want to stop. And I'm like, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom. I said, guys, is there a rest? Yeah, yeah, there's a restroom over there. I go in there and just, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. But that was good after that. You know what I'm saying? Did you tell him? No, I told, Doug, <laughs> I told Doug after the fact, he's like, I'm what? Fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't say anything, but I thought, I was like, you know, when you throw that bat, like, your eyes are all red. <laughs> Look, I've been yeah, crying. Uh, so, yeah. like that, so. That's not, that's gotta be common in one of those things, right? I'm like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Because you know, you know the, what are they called? Um, the, the VR? Yeah. VR, people get motion sickness. Really like bad in those. Those are even worse than, than this was. I didn't, you know, it, it didn't feel like it was that bad. I think it was a combo of all those things that got me. Um, Have you guys seen the um, anti-seasickness glasses, I think they're called? Have you seen these? They look stupid, but apparently the most effective uh, device you could get for seasickness or motion. You haven't seen them? Mm. She look got up that for you on the boat. So, okay, this is, you'll see them and you'll see why. I won't get them. I'd rather take Zofran or whatever. <laughs> like, feel like I'd rather throw up. But they have like, cir- they're, like, they're like glasses in the front and on the sides. And I guess they keep the horizon balanced for you, but you look like a. We gotta buy you a pair, dude. They're right, they're right, they're right. Oh my god, bro! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's amazing! Oh my god, that's yeah, amazing! So like, yeah, I'd rather have motion sickness than with. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you look like Do people sick. actually buy these things. They work. Apparently, they're super, super oh effective. Trust me, god. I get those things. Yeah, I mean, dude, like motion we sickness went, is we terrible. Deep sea fishing. Oh, that was oh, the worst. that was horrible. That's yeah, that yeah. probably the worst motion sickness. Yeah, I've deep ever sea. It's the worst feeling ever, dude, to, to get. But look at those weird. But apparently, I read studies on them, and they're supposedly super effective because they they keep the horizon balanced or something. I don't know. So, so that it, might, it must have something to do with your peripheral, right? Because yes, it, it, that's what. My, so see how the the bottom part's got like a blue ring. I, yeah. I guess that maintains like the horizon, dude. I'm gonna buy them just for fun. There's that cheap. liquid in there that yeah. moves. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. At what point does it deteriorate? Because I've noticed, like, I, I it never affected me. Like, I did yeah. the craziest things you could That's, possibly do. It gets do. worse as you get older. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and then I, I attribute it now. I was like, the, the pivotal moment for me was, like, doing that F-16 flight. And then after that, I swear, I was sensitive to almost everything. Like, even just doing the teacups and stuff with my kids, I was just oh, like, dude. Oh. What is it? Do you know? So, I mean, you don't have anything for this? No, I mean. Because. I, like, that, vestibular So, stuff. I was the same way until I was. 26 or 27 i can't remember how it was right around there but um you know for me talk about i was like a gaming nerd for a long time what stopped me really from gaming aside from like feeling like i needed to grow up and like start spending more time reading books <laughs> triggered <laughs> like, that was part Besides of it becoming 30 uh, <laughs> that was part of it but the the truth is what probably one of the things that was that like definitely tipped me over was my best friends were all into the you know first player uh, gun first game. person shooter yeah first person shooter games and uh, just and I played that my whole life. Never had any problems. Did all the Halos. Did all those games. Right, growing up and Call of Duties. And uh, it was probably on the second or third Call of Duty game that had came out. It, we just got it. We were all excited. We just set up in my house. And uh, like a half hour in, I'm like, I got to throw it and puke. Didn't didn't think it was the game. Of course not. I've been doing this my whole life. Kept coming back to it every time I come back to the game. It was making me throw up, and then I just couldn't do it. Well, I you could can no longer... you can train the vestibular system. Uh, but there's a certain, this is Jessica's teaching me this because she does vestibular, I hope I'm saying right, vestibular exercises with the kids. She has them hang upside down. She has them play with things that spin. And you know, when little kids do this, they think it's fun, but in reality, what they're doing is they're training the vestibular system. So if you don't do a lot of that as a kid, it's worse so then that, as you get older. So then what might've happened, which would make more sense is that when I started getting into my mid twenties, 
uh, gaming became way more infrequent. Yeah. And so maybe so you just weren't as trained. So you like think that? maybe yeah. I wasn't as trained in maybe. condition and then, then doing that. And then like yeah. something like we just did this right now, like it has, I haven't done anything like that in a, a long time. And and you so, go too intense with it versus like scaling. Early so back. I mean, I, that I, I hope it's that because then that gives me hope that like, if I do practice, more, it. practice it, I'll get acclimated and, and let, you know who will know um, acrobats and um, dancers will probably know that. Right. Like, cause they spin so much and flip and stuff. Uh, they probably know real well. I mean, I would think that trained. they would be the most acclimated though, because they've been training their That's whole life. That's what I mean. They yeah. probably will tell you, I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that a lot of them are like, oh yeah, you get used to it. You know, yeah. get used to it. It would make sense that it's just less frequency or less uh, introductions of, you know, spinning and upside down kind of activities. Well, it would, it would, it would make sense too. That's why that would ha out of nowhere kind of happen to me at 20 mm -hmm. is I wasn't playing as much in my late mid to late twenties. Obviously, as I got older, I wasn't was working, doing things. Yeah, and so yeah, I didn't we're, have. The we're same, very fixed now. Didn't have. Uh, I don't think I, I did it as much. Yeah, so she'll have I, the kids. That's like, interesting. Oh wait, uh, you can acclimate to spinning through practice. There you go. So you can. Yeah, she does these exercises with the kids, where she'll send me videos, and the kids are like hanging it upside down, and she'll say, "Oh, you know, vestibular training or something like that." So apparently, it's a. And if kids, I, I, I'm probably getting this wrong, but. If they don't, you know, some kids go from like dragging themselves to like walking. They never go crawling. Apparently the different stages train the vestibular system as well. So you're less likely to have a more developed vestibular system. If you system skip one of those. Uh, and I did. I didn't crawl. Wow. I never crawled as a kid. Oh, I went from dragging to walking. Huh. Yeah, I never did full crawling. Explains a lot. <laughs> I, I skipped a step. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Or <laughs> I'm I know awesome. Better. Or I'm like three yeah. years yeah. old. <laughs> better walk. <laughs> I'm ready to tell people to do. Yeah, hold me up. Oh, anyway. yeah. Hey, yeah. We, we talked about insulin earlier. You know, I just read a study on cannabinoids uh and insulin. Check this study cannabinoids out. Cannabinoids and insulin. Cannabinoids. So you know how um they've observed that people that use cannabinoids, cannabis in particular, but cannabinoids are also on the hemp plant. They tend to be leaner, even though... Which is weird because you think munchies, you think... It's right a away. paradox, right? Because you think yeah. they eat more because it stimulates appetite. But they tend to be leaner and they tend to have better metabolic health. And so they can't really figure out what's going on. But they do know that there's a, a, an insula, insulin sensitizing effect. In fact, uh, there's, there's pharmaceutical companies that are using cannabinoids like CBD and CBC and other uh, cannabinoids studying whether or not they could be effective like treatments for prediabetes and stuff. Hmm. What they did the study is they took individuals, gave them brownies, one with uh, one with cannabinoids and one without, mm. and then tested them both. And the ones without cannabinoids had a much higher insulin spike than the ones that didn't. So it has an insulin it has an insulin sensitizing effect. Interesting. And we know what that ha that long term can do for your health, right? If you b remain sensitive to insulin, you're less likely to develop all those metabolic diseases like, you know, like diabetes, uh, eventually heart disease and stuff like that. Do you, okay, with things like that, do you foresee, this kind of reminds me of like the the creatine wave too, right? Of like, do you see more uses just from a general health like I this? For, because you, you, you can get this stuff at bulk too. So like, I feel like as, as it becomes more and more popular, more and more people are doing it, we can, we can grow in bulk. It was going to continue to lower the price to where it be, it could become. Right now, it's too expensive to become like a thing in the multivitamin yeah, yeah, too, yeah. right? Like no one's because no one's going to pay you know a hundred and something dollars for a multivitamin to have a little bit of uh, cannabis in it. But I could see it getting to that point because it is something that can grow in bulk like that and mass be mass produced. Yeah, I, I think they have to be. You have to be careful and wait right for more data before you could say anything. But I I could see somebody using like Ned for example. Uh, I could see it be useful with meals um, as a way to maybe blunt. In fact, I would love for yeah. listeners who have CGMs, if you also use Ned. Like beforehand? You take use Ned drops. 30 minutes before you eat something and compare it to when you don't. It would be so know. cool to do that with it. Obviously, I would love to see. Same foods, yeah. right? Yes. So yeah. Test it with the same foods before. And probably the best way to do it is find something, a food that you know already kind of spikes it pretty good. Or something you've already eaten, you know? So yeah. like, oh, I yeah. know what my insulin does after I eat that. Yeah, Let yeah. me try this first. Huh. And see what happens. Be careful we, which brownie you eat. Yeah. Can we talk? Yeah, yeah, add more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about the? Uh, I saw the what they're. I don't know if I can spoil what they're working on, or did they finish it? We had it in the studio. What you saw it with the uh, for the dogs? Oh yeah, I took it home with me. Is it out? Is I it have no idea. Uh, look, yeah. look at their website. I What's the name know. of the 
company. It's Ned. It's oh, Ned. Ned. Oh, Ned. Dogs. Yeah, Ned. They've, they've just um, making one for animals. They've no. formulated it. So yeah, we, for we dogs. Oh, yeah. I was already using it with the, the bulldogs of consistently back in the day. So. It works really well on pets. But we, what we, what I never knew was like the dosage. And so yes. I was just kind of like, so they give you a little, <laughs> yeah, a little little card that goes yeah. with it that actually gives you like, you know. 10 pound dog and then yeah. you yeah, add they've got it on their uh, website so they are selling it oh yeah. perfect so is it drops is it biscuits it is drops it's, it's okay. drops yeah. and it's for pets yeah really effective in my experience I have family members that use Ned for their dogs on uh, the 4th of July yeah. yes for, for anxiety that's how we've always used it yeah. we, we used to I mean we used to use even it's good you know, to know the dosage though for yeah because that's what I didn't know I, was just like, <laughs> I went a little ham uh, uh, with, with Arlo because he did you really it. now what I didn't yeah. know and I wanted to see was if there's anything else in the formulation to go with it like is there anything else I'm sure Ned, knowing oh, Ned they probably that's a great it, found, question did you find other... ingredients, Doug? Yeah, I'm looking for it right yeah, now. Yeah, look at the ingredients. Because I wouldn't be surprised if there's something else. Crossover from the stress blend, I'm sure. Oh, it's very, very basic. Formulated. It's full spectrum hemp. Oh, it's got peanut butter flavor. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Br that's brilliant. That is a really taste like peanut butter. You ever, I'll you ever, have to try. When you guys were little, <laughs> did you guys ever eat a little like weird? A, you ever eat an animal biscuit? Like a, a, yeah, like a dog treat. No, nothing. Yeah, I ever did that. I did. I do when I was a kid. It was in the back. It was you know in the we garage. We dared each other to do it. But yeah, it's like chicken flavor. When I was a kid, it, uh, it tastes nothing like chicken. Never, never had like the canned meaty food. Ooh, disgusting. Ooh. Oh, did you? There try was that? a kid that did that. So no. oh, oh, fork and just no, no. Oh, oh, come I, on. I threw oh, up. If you're starving, you have to. You can survive. You, you can, can do it. Actually, you can. Yeah. But you can eat that. You know what? Like. Where where are they stuff. getting that meat, dude? There's a whole. I thought it was well, I thought it was dead horses. No, it's bro. The, <laughs> is that where it came I don't from? think you're legal. I think you can serve horse meat. Oh, you can it's like the scrap, like the worst. I could have sworn they could do that. Gross. What happens with dead horses? Someone's using that. Wow. I, I don't think. They, I think I the thought, same thing that happens with dead pets. I don't think they serve them. I think that waste of food. I think is that dog thinking? food has a very low uh, entry level for like it what it does, but horse meat is not allowed. There's a whole dark market out there yeah, look, look, for look stuff like that, dude. Would you? Would you? Google? Swine food. So you can you so well, pigs can eat it like whales I too. Told, like, I knew yeah, I knew dead horses that. were fed to animals. I thought it was dogs. Oh wow! Yeah, a method uh, for animal food. I wow. to, I told you. Look at oh, I'm pretty sure some dog food like has they can horse, get away with it. Has horse yeah. food in it. I mean that would make just sense. Google that. Does does some dog? Food I like have how horse it says meat? a method for recovering protein. Why don't you just say give it to animals? Yeah, to try and make it sound like less. Yeah. Because you know, because horses are special, you know what I mean. They are. They're majestic. They're, they are, man. Yeah, they Without are. Horses, I love we, horses, we would not be here if it wasn't. No reputable no. pet food companies. Oh, do not use horse meat because okay. people wait, wait, buy it. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The, mar the consumers yeah. gonna be pissed. In the 1970s, oh, I'll, I'll, the U.S. I'll, I'll, outlawed uh, it. Okay. So probably totally doesn't happen. So people just, follow the rules. All just time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People so totally follow the rules. Never <laughs> happened in like a Taco Bell. Or anything, <laughs> oh, really, allegedly. Yeah. Stop, dude. Oh, you see, bro. Oh, oh, no, it didn't happen. It did not. I said it didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was the thing, Kyle? Kyle, he, he, Kyle's caught a little bit of you where he goes down the rabbit hole when he doesn't feel well or like oh, that. Really? He, so he, he got him. he got sick this weekend. So he's just like oh, yeah, trying right. to get to the bottom of it. He told me there was like some uh, some boar's head uh, thing going around. Some boar's head virus. Did you hear anything? What? <laughs> Boar's yeah. head virus? They're getting no. creative with these viruses. I they know, dude. Monkey, we yeah, don't need another freaking boars, virus, boar's, boar's head, monkey, monkey pox. I thought boars, isn't that like a, a brand of a- Put a, boar's head virus or something like that. Like That's what he, he might, said. Boar's head virus. There's recall, something. there it is, right there. Oh, a, as boar's no. head recall linked to death. Huh? No, this is deli Listeria. meat. Deli There's meat. a company called boar's oh, head yeah, I've had has boar's deli meat. meat. Dang. Listeria. What happened? Because I've been eating that. There's listeria outbreak. Oh, so maybe that's the food poisoning. Yeah, that's what he was thinking. Oh, I see oh, what you're saying. Yeah. That's what he's okay, He went down the different. rabbit hole of. <laughs> he thought it was an actual thought, boar's head. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Now it makes sense. It was the boar's head turkey meat. That's why. It's like, what are you doing eating boar's head? Who's bro? banging that's, the boars, dude? That's so yeah. random. <laughs> Come on, man. So random. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's what must have been what it was. Yeah, I guess there's a big recall. Uh, on it's it. not always. How happens. bad's the breakout? Is it all time? Nine people died. Holy shit. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, this is see, he's so he's he's got a little. You know bit. what makes me? You know what's sad about this is that uh, so we we give my uh, I'm, I'm going to get some angry Dude. messages every time yeah. I talk about this. I get angry messages, but my daughter, my she's almost two. We give her milk still, right? So she'll still have milk in a bottle. But we we, we buy unpasteurized. We buy raw. Uh, unpasteurized, unhomogenized. People milk. get mad about that. Yeah, dude. Because what? yeah, Weird. it's dangerous. Fly, go fly a kite. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. They're healthy cows, and it's some of the it's some of the best milk you could give your yeah. kid. And if you look at the data on uh, the value, nutrients are 
Yeah. I'm so surprised. Totally. I know. I know you grew up on farms. So yes, like, that's why it's so surprising to me. Like, you just you're, spray yeah, your face, yeah, right? Yeah, you're yeah. better off getting that stuff. <laughs> you squirt away. Oh, your, my God. Dude, coffee. well, the, the fear, going back to that a little bit, like, uh, it's coming from so many different angles. Like, there was a video. This guy was like, and I knew it was bullshit, but, like, because – it was they were using these spiders as like oh my god these huge spiders are invading uh, the U S and like uh, they're eating like all like pets and this and that and the other yeah and they were like huge he's like yeah they're like at least ten inches and he's showing all these like what? videos of these big spiders like on walls and all this stuff and it was like the same type of a spider you saw in arachnophobia and I'm just like okay no dude fake. this is so fake yeah but it was like. Come on, like they're, they're just like grasping at anything right now to throw at us. Like, oh, oh my God. this is happening. It's fear Be season. afraid. It's yeah. fear season. season. It's fear yeah. season right now. You know, speaking of fake, I saw uh, this on the news. It was it was good. So, so keep your eyes out for this. But because uh, I know I've done this a couple times without even like thinking double check or not. Um, there's now a way, like a lot of places. So I, there's a place called uh, Alice's oh, that we we drive to. That's yeah, kind of like Highway Nine, that. right? Yeah. And uh, there's a parking lot where, like, you you can park. And when you pull up, there's on the meters, you can just QR code it. And then it's a, a website. And then you could, like, pay for the parking right then and there. So some scammers got really brilliant <gasps> and made, like, Fake these QR codes. And just put them all over meters all over. I think it was San Francisco or wow. Sacramento or something like that. I'm a little so impressed with that. That's I thought awesome. so, too. I was like, oh, that's actually because I've Organized. done it. And it's not like I'm, like, double checking the website. I'm just like, this, it's here. It's on the meter. So I just QR code it. I automatically put my card in, pay my $25 or whatever wow. it was for parking and move along. Don't think nothing of it. I have to put my license plate in. It looks so all you can very it. easily connect it to your own yeah, whatever. You, you QR code, you can put it to anything you want. You build a little basic website <laughs> behind it and then just like capturing money. And then you have to wonder like if people are voluntarily giving their stuff like that, like what's the, what are the, I mean, obviously you can get in trouble for that. But like what are the ramifications of that when they're voluntarily like giving you their money like that? ramifications well yeah. you're stealing it you're well, lying yeah. but how do you get caught it's fraud yeah that's what i mean it's total fraud yeah so but how do you get caught get, with that well that's the thing. well that money's traceable right but if you put it in I mean, what i mean is like that that sounds like a, a great I know. uh crime it does. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, a great way to get away to come up with a crime that's pretty i thought so too that's a I thought pretty organized pretty, idea pretty clever Criminals right Criminals have become weak these days I, you, back in the day so, look, yeah. look someone in the face you know, so, so passive the thing, that, <laughs> the thing that's always interesting to me and i think this is so true right like uh that whoever thought of that whoever thought of that is i guarantee you would be successful in almost anything else that he yeah. does yeah, like I wonder if the, it's their side the, hustle like or the, if they're all in. Like you know? the, the the cleverness to create that, no, right, to dude. build the website. Right. To, like I mean, that's like so. They could have put their energy towards, towards almost, something legal. Yes, and they would have done fine. Yes, mm. yeah. it's so like it's low hanging fruit though. Think about it, dude. They definitely yeah. could have worked for the government. Scanning Let's those honest. things every day. Yeah, yeah it's quick and dirty. It, well, yeah. it is quick and dirty, and it's I, but you got to wonder like, but then because it's attached to accounts, I would think it'd be so easy to trace. Unless somehow you, will, you would trace it to the account, that's unless getting the money, you had, shut unless it down. you have it sh going like getting automatically wired to like a overseas type of account or Probably. something, something like that. Or if there's like if it goes to multiple games, think it out, think it out. I know. How, how would we do this? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have the, this by the end of this episode. I, do you remember? Do you remember in that what was the what was the movie based on the true story? The guy that was doing the bank checks, that was doing the checks. Oh, yeah. all catch me if you catch can. me if you can. Oh. One of the things that that one of the reasons why that hustle worked so well was because. You, because every bank has like a certain zip code. And so it takes a certain amount of time for them to track it from one code, oh. zip code to the other. So if you put it to enough zip codes, money moving to, by the time it, it, they, yeah. the cops could track where it's landed, you could already have removed it and been gone. So did you guys see the, uh, it was like on Netflix, I think they, were, they covered the, the one scam where this girl got into um, couponing and and realized that like she could go to the plant where they actually made the coupons and then figured out like in Mexico where they actually like put it all together and did a deal with the people that were in this plant where they like create all these coupons, massive coupons to save or like get one free or yeah. whatever. And uh, would have like an insider guy just would buy like a, a stack of all these things and then, you know, flying back to the States and would sell them on a website. And so made like... 
hand over fist money off people what want to just buy the coupons direct from this website and like made a and so they had to like uh they they had a lot like the FBI got involved and it was like oh wow this like total character FBI guy that like nobody was like oh you're here for like the coupons you know like and it was like it's it's a great uh, documentary I almost feel bad arresting you know I'm someone for coupons yeah exactly yeah. but that was the, that that's why it was so successful because everybody overlooked it because it's like well whatever it's like free or it's like discounted yeah. or whatever but uh if you get people to actually buy those this like stacks of them like you used to get those books yeah you yeah know, and you'd i remember like, those yeah you'd save all this money and so it's like pe like shoppers got all thrifty there's some people that are really good at that yeah i've seen videos of that well they'll, oh, it's, they'll, they're, it's they'll, an obsession yeah they'll ring up like a 200 dollars grocery bill and then through coupons will bring down to like 15 bucks Mm -hmm. I've seen some that are just ridiculous. Really? You yeah. Can't even, oh, you can't even believe. Is it still a thing? Because that used to be like, remember that back in the days when you used to, there was nothing worse than waiting in a grocery line and then the lady get in front of you, opens Pulls up her purse. Coupons. She's got like 20 oh something coupons. God. Oh, wait, I, I have a coupon I'm for getting, that. I'm stepping out of line oh and God, I'm leaving. That, 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 that never happens stuff. anymore. That used, yeah. to, that used to happen yeah. a lot when we were kids. You, you'd be, you're in line. And then write your, a check. You get it in line you know, with like a little candy bar. You know what I'm saying? Your little 50 cent candy bar. The lady in front of you has got like 50 coupons. And then she yeah. writes a check. You know, like that. <laughs> like old, Nobody's got time for that yeah, anymore, dude. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen anymore. No. Like when was that time? You never see someone write a check in a, in a grocery store. You never see anybody pull out coupons anymore. But that used to be a thing, where somebody in line. Could I was really just get you like that. It's funny. I was just watching. Uh, so I introduced my my son to uh, Transformers, the original cartoon oh, yeah. Transformers. I'm so happy Good he dad. likes it. Good oh, dad. bro, he's. Uh, you know, when little kids get obsessed, by the way, they're you guys know this. They become experts so fast. He watched like three episodes, Decepticons, yeah. Autobots. Op <laughs> First of all, he, he called them Amazon Prime. I'm like, no, that's Optimus Prime. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Yeah, he Prime. called them Amazon it's Prime. Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah, you know when you order a lot of shit from yeah, Amazon dude. Prime too, though. You'll <laughs> say that, that. It makes that connection right away. But wow. as we're watching it, it's it's the original cartoon. So what does it do every every once in a while? It goes, yes, it goes, you know, Transformers will be back after this short messages. And then it goes to the next one. We're back. or so. It's like, why does it do that? Like when I was a kid. Yeah. They would show commercials. Yeah. What are commercials? So I had this whole conversation. And then I had this conversation. I'm like, when I was a kid and I wanted the to animal, watch, you'd have I'm like, to watch when I wanted to watch something, I didn't put it on the TV. I had to wait for the TV to put it on. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, the TV decided. And I, I can I, I can see his wheels like, like, like how does that work? Like, why? That's stupid. You just get it immediately. Yeah, why would they even do that? I'm like, that's the way it worked. I had to wait for the TV to put it on and I had to go and find it and put it on. He's like, looking at me like, that sucks. I'm like, I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. It was a weird world, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's what so we grew funny. up with. Yeah, yeah, the so lag funny. time was insane. You had to wait for that and then commercials. I told him when the commercials came on, that's when I would go. Yeah, they taught us delayed gratification. You know, yeah. we, we just hated it. Totally. Uh, yeah. Saturday morning was the only time you could watch Transformers. There was no other time to watch Transformers. Oh, uh, yeah. Besides Saturday morning. That's why I remember every commercial. Yeah, it's just forever burned in here, dude. It, it, we memorize a show till the end of time. You know yeah. what though? They got more effective with advertising. You would think that they would have lost something, but they just got they just got better, more sophisticated, yeah. way more sophisticated, yeah, yeah. way smarter yeah, now yeah. No, it than ever before. It was better when you knew oh, commercials coming on. Now they're really now you're getting sold stuff you don't even know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My phone right <laughs> you now get is probably, up, get a snack. I'm probably back. gonna go to Amazon earlier later and there's gonna be Transformers. Oh, how did that? No, that's yeah. wild to me right yeah. now is how that's happening and that's there's definitely they're definitely utilizing that for sure because yeah. there's been times where we're having conversation in here and then like and something we've never talked about or whatever and then all of a sudden yeah. i'm getting ads on it i'm like okay yeah crazy something all this all these electronics in here there's something that's picking They're up all our stuff. that's why you should talk nicely to the machines when they, i've said that since they when, the, when the mutiny starts <laughs> <laughs> i remember you you were yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> you're dead you're dead not yeah. you <laughs> so i want to i want to just to to pay a little homage to this uh, and I don't want to talk too much because it's difficult to talk about but my my grandmother was one of the most special people in my life passed mm. away uh last week and uh I just wanted to say something nice about her because she was such a, a wonderful she was literally the most selfless other focused uh person and she did it with joy she always did it with joy and happiness never resentful never and she shaped she really was the the person that shaped the family uh through everything and so we we, we got to be with her and it was such a it was incredible. My grandmother, she was 88. So my grandfather died two years ago. And, uh, you know, since then she's been kind of sick and stuff. So she was in the hospital and she got to have her whole family around her. So, I mean, the hospital room at any given moment probably had 30 or 40 people. Wow. I mean, just so many people were in there. The nurses couldn't get through people around her praying, holding hands. My aunts were singing to her. They were playing opera music for her. Uh, her house had just sold. 
that morning. And she said, I do not want to go until my house is sold. So my, I, I found out the date. So weird when stuff like this wow. happens, dude. What? So, so this was the, this house, my grandparents both bought San Jose, 1966 for $27,000. Okay. They both built it. All the trees, everything was theirs. Man. They put everything up. That house sold one one point five million dollars. So obviously, many years later, sells that morning. She's in the hospital. She waits for all her kids to get there. She had to wait for her son to drive down from Sacramento. So two and a half hours. She's in the state. She's not going. Everybody's around her, and the sun sets, and then she she goes. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, what a with everybody. Thing. It was yeah, it was it was amazing. Man. Wonderful woman. So we'll all we're all going to be with her and, and just kind of remember her. But man, this was a this was a tough one. Well, I didn't know, I didn't think you were going to share it or talk about it at all. Yeah, I did I, a lot of crying, bro. I let it all out. <clears throat> you know, I could shut it off. But I, <laughs> I thought it was really cool. I don't know tough. if you know this or not, but um, so well, obviously we had flowers and stuff sent, right? Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, and uh, Jerry is obviously responsible for doing the leg actual leg work, right? Um, and I didn't know this, but she actually like researched like Italian flowers. Oh, like, so wow. like, I don't know if you knew that or not, but like the, the bouquet you guys got. Was it? Were, yeah. Yeah. It was oh, like special. So great. And I didn't tell her that. I didn't, we, I just made sure that like, make sure you get us something really that's nice. That's why we got or, tomato plants. I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of basil in there. A bunch yeah. of basil. But I, I found that afterwards. So shout yeah. out to Jerry for, you know, going the extra mile. But we we like were that. in there and, and all the people that couldn't be there were faced. We had at least five phones on FaceTime with family members yeah. from all over the country and the world who wanted to be That's with so her cool. during this moment. My son, my three-year-old, sends a message, uh, sends voice messages to her that I got to play in her ear, um, you know, while she was, you know, while she was, she was going. It was, it was, it was pretty incredible. So, you know, it's so, time. it's so difficult in, in a time like that, that when it's really sad, but it's also such a happy, positive thing when, people show up for a person like that because it speaks volumes about that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, obviously when you're in it and you're a part of it, you, you are, you are feeling sadness and, and yeah. mourning and those types of feelings. But the, you know, from an outside perspective person who's not feeling the same emotions you are, it's such a cool thing to see mm -hmm. uh, when people show up like that for a person, because it's such a testament to the life that they led, the lives they touched. I mean, she, her and my grandfather definitely started a legacy here, but my grandmother was, uh, and I, you know, I, I'm recent, I just recently became a Christian. So I didn't understand just how strong uh, of an impact her faith played, but she, she was such a devout uh, Catholic and she was so, she literally, when you read about the fruits of the Holy Spirit, she bore that. Like, I know that culture, I know that generation, you do what you're supposed to, you do your duty. But my grandmother never complained. She was never resentful. Not because she wasn't supposed to. She was literally joyful her whole life serving others, her children, her family, her husband. And it, it's so obvious to me now, my mom's family is so special. They really are. Uh, they're just so close and so wonderful. I've never met anybody like them before. And everybody that marries into the family says the same thing. And I know why. It was because of my grandmother. My grandmother... It's it, it, and while she was there, I remember you know her her brother came in, and as she was going, he said, "You you gave my son a, a her his son was trying to ha have a child. They were having trouble conceiving, and she did the rosary and prayed for them, and then they got pregnant with a son. She knew my my wife was pregnant with Dahlia before we did. We were visiting, and she goes, um, "Somebody's having a baby." And my wife's like, "Not me." And she's like, "I think it's a girl. It's going to look a lot like Sal." And my wife came home. She's like, "Your grandma. She's saying that thing again, but I'm not." week later we find out she's pregnant sure enough my daughter looks just like me wow stuff like that all the yeah, time with her so. that's wild special woman total that's special so woman. yeah i uh doug i wanted to do something a little bit different for this shout out I, i'd like to uh list off all the free things that we provide as far as like all the free forums the mindpumpfree.com the instagram trainer page like can we like give like a short little rundown of, and what they're each for you know because we've gotten to a point now yeah where we have so much content that we try and provide for free uh, that I want people to understand where all those resources are and then what they're each for, right? Because you have things like Holistic Health on Facebook, which is like our Dr. Cabral's team and what's going what's going on over there. We have the Hormones one, which is Transcending All Them are, are helping us that. We have the Mind Pump the Trainers uh, IG. We have the uh, uh, Growth Secrets for the Facebook, which is for trainers that are trying to scale their business. We obviously have mindpumpfree.com. We have the three YouTube channels that we have, like listing all those off, what they're all for. Did I miss any? I'm trying to... 
What I what I get there? We got personal trainer. Justin's gross, uh, gross Justin's secret. OnlyFans. Yeah, I got yeah. that. Yeah, I got the gross secrets one in there. That's already. not free, dude. Oh my bad. Yeah, we're talking about free. I you know I and part of the reason why I wanted to bring that up is just because I think that you know we get people sometimes that come into the audience or they come into the business late and don't realize how many things that we we produce on a regular basis that is valuable and free. And to always take advantage of that stuff first. I also wanted to mention, if I have to find this, is that uh, Dr. Cabral is having an event in Florida on October 23rd through the 25th. Is this the one that Sal's speaking at? Sal is speaking at it. Yeah, yeah. It's called the Re Re the reimagininghealthsummit.com. Yep. And you can go over there and sign up. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. There's a company called Brain FM that produces music and sounds that can change the state of your mind. Literally, will change your brain waves to help you sleep, meditate, relax, or even focus. It really does work. In fact, you could try it out for 30 days for free. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. Give it a try. See what happens. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Niall from Canada. What's up, Niall? How you doing, Niall? How can we help you? How you doing, guys? First, just want to say... Uh, super stoked to be on this call. Uh, you guys have uh, uh, led my path for some time. I've followed you since. I mean, I think I've been listening to you from the from the very beginning. So, oh wow, um, it's uh, it's been a journey. I've, I've I'm now a new father, so I can resonate with what a lot of you guys are saying. Yeah, kids only six months. Uh, Congrats! But it's uh, cool to have watched your guys' journey through this and. Uh, and also had my own journey at the same time. Good for you, man. Very cool. Um, thank you. Um, a little background. I was a personal trainer back in the day, CrossFit coach, did some coaching, CSTS. Um, uh, I did uh, yeah, a bunch of coaching um, with group settings and then personal training. And then I uh, was listening to you guys a lot, and I, I wanted to somehow – I got a change – professions that I wanted to somehow, um, you know, monetize and get into the, uh, the fitness and health industry and find a way that I can give back to more people. And so I actually became an acupuncturist. Um, and I now incorporate like mobility training with acupuncture to kind of look at like functional range assessments and functional range systems and training while we can like, you know, look at how things aren't working and then we can needle them and then make them fire to then, uh, awesome. kind of get a really good for, for patients and, and, uh, um, functional range movement and stuff. Great. So that's a cool combo. I know, yeah. Very cool. I know Sal, you had, you had a weird, um, weird experience with an acupuncturist back in the day. I was just listening to that, uh, episode. <laughs> well, I don't do anything like that. Thank God. Yeah, I've had good experiences too. That was, I don't know what the hell. That happened one there. time you got needled. It was yeah. all weird. Yeah. 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 So what I, uh, what I'm, what I'm calling about is um, I had, I, I sent you guys uh, an email as well with some pre and post um, pictures and just where I was in 2017 and where I kind of am now and some pictures in between. And so in 2017, I was diagnosed with a uh, long thoracic nerve palsy, which is uh, creates a winging scapula. So I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of that before. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar. Yeah. But yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, of course, creating the, the lat and the serratus not firing and then creating like this imbalance within the, the body. And so I had a choice to make. Do I continue to train? Or do I take like a big break and not train and not uh, um, continue with my programming? And, and I decided to keep training because, again, for me, training is a little bit of medicine. And I really love uh, movement and stuff. So I trained, which created some imbalances and some asymmetry. And so, you know, from right to left, my Latin serratus took a long time and it's still recovering. And what's happened now is I have an imbalance and, and a bit of a posterior, anterior um, left to right twisting that's happening. And so I get like this T spine T three to five is kind of my, my, my crux. And anytime I'm, you know, I feel like I'm getting really gains and I'm, I'm building the size that I want. I hit this, uh, this injury and it's always, uh, an imbalance in that. So I'm just trying to figure out, um, still to this, 
this day, you know, like five years later, trying to figure out how to create that symmetry between left and right, um, how to balance that back out. Okay. So depending on uh, where you're at with it and how it happened, um, that's going to really make a big difference on how I can answer this. So I'm assuming it's not congenital. In other words, you weren't born with it. Was this due to traumatic injury or virus? Do you know what caused uh, this to happen? So I'm glad that you asked that because this is a fun part of it is that, um, I mean, it was it, stress. I had a stressful conversation with an ex, my ex. And um, after the conversation, it was, you know, pretty, pretty intense about life purposes and life path. And I, I don't think I was being in my truth and being honest with myself and being honest with her. And I, after the conversation, you know, went outside and all of a sudden I'm just like, Ugh, just hold my lap, just hold. And I all of a sudden just shut down. And then literally 30 minutes later, I couldn't lift my arm. And then for about two weeks, yeah. I couldn't like lift my arm up. And it took seeing a lot of different practitioners to find out that like when I lift, when I finally lifted my arms overhead, my whole shoulder blade just came off. So, wow. uh, I mean, I saw <laughs> endocrinologists about this and Women. trying to track the nerve, <laughs> all that. And it, they, they still didn't know what was going on. Okay. So, uh, is the diagnosis that the nerve, I mean, if you, if you're diagnosed with uh palsy of this nerve, this thoracic nerve, I mean, that essentially says that the nerve function is, isn't really ever going to come back. Is that the official diagnosis that the nerve is gone dead? Um, no, the nerve is starting to regrow. It's starting to come back. And so I have mm. gained some function, but there's still like this, Good. like, okay. We Which hope because we can work on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is interesting because typically when you're dealing with, uh, this situation, you are looking at developing, uh, uh, you know, compensation patterns, which, you know, when we talk about compensation or, uh, patterns with movement patterns, typically it's in, it's in a bad context. Okay. But they exist for a reason. So let's just say you had a severe injury. This nerve was severed, never going to come back you need compensatory patterns to be able to continue to function. And it's not in the context of what I just said, a bad thing to train with those compensations because that's just the way you're going to move now. Yeah, for the rest of your life. And so you need to be able to compensate and you need to be able to, to do, do things without the involvement of the serratus interior and, and the trapezius and, and, and you know the main muscles that tend to be um, affected by this, this thoracic nerve. Um, th now, by the way, have you looked into, um, working with a specialist on, uh, cause they can do some procedures where they'll bring over another nerve or, or, or to try to connect things, but you're saying it's connecting back or it seems to be reconnecting. Yeah, I, I, I did look into that and, and the procedures for that was, uh, um, kind of daunting and I didn't really want to go there yet. Surgery is kind of like the last, um, step that I'd like to take. And so oh. a lot of physio work, um, you know, trying to do these unilateral movements and, okay. and focus on re recruiting. Now there's no impingement of this nerve, right? Did you get an MRI and make sure there's no rib impingement or something that's still, you know, shutting it off? Yeah. 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 I did do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's actually kind of cool that you're an acupuncturist because in my experience working with nerve related issues, uh, and I'll get to the exercise portion, but in working with nerve related issues, um, m the most success I ever had was working with an acupuncturist. So, uh, years ago I had an acupuncturist in my studio. This is the good experience <laughs> not the bad one. <laughs> I had an acupuncturist in my, in my studio and she would explain things from an Eastern medicine perspective using terminology like chi, energy flow, you know, yin, yang, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, I started to try to relate it to my understanding of, uh, you know, kind of Western explanations of what's going on. And to me, it seems without trying to discredit the, the Eastern explanation of, you know, chi, to me, it looks like you're working with the nervous system when you're doing acupuncture. And so I've had clients with nerve damage or nerve related, uh, issues where, um, you know, paresthesia, for example, or numbness or, you know, and we, we would work in combination with acupuncture. And what we would do is we would do acupuncture before and after exercise. 
And I saw results doing that with clients that I had never seen um, before. Now, in some cases, we made progress, but we're never able to just with the time that we had, which I, uh, I'm thinking that was probably a two-year process, made tremendous prog progress, but we were never able to go like full function. And in another case, uh, we were able to get full function back. Um, and, and in other areas, they weren't so severe, but we saw some good, some tremendous progress. Mm -hmm. So I would do acupuncture before and after workouts, focusing on correctional exercise here. And then the other thing is when we're trying to work on connection, frequency is key. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be frequency. Intensity is your enemy here because if you push hard, you're going to go into your, your compensation patterns. Okay. If you try to do anything with any type of intensity, the, this nerve signal that's weak, your body's going to just go to it, what it knows, and you're going to strengthen your imbalances. So really it's about light connection and movement. Anything above and beyond that is going to be wrong. So I would do very, very frequent, like literally every hour trying to activate, find a correctional exercise movement. Maybe it has to do with uh, scapular mobility. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's wall circles, but try to find something where you can see it turning on and you can start to make things happen and do it throughout the entire day at a low intensity. And then when you do your workouts, do acupuncture before and after. And I'm not an expert in acupuncture. You're an acupuncturist. But the kind of acupuncture that I was told that this individual was doing had to do with improving energy flow through the area that was uh, th that we were targeting. And again, we saw some pretty uh, significant uh, results. The last thing I would say, and this is more new, would be to look at peptides uh, that help with uh, nerve function and healing. Uh, off the top of my head, um, I think BPC-157 probably falls in that category. But I do believe there are other peptides that are more specific to nerve the nervous system that I'm not super familiar with. You, What I would recommend you do is go through our, our partners at MP Hormones, let them know exactly what's going on and see what, what uh, would be recommend, uh, recommended to you. But that, that would be the best, in my opinion, best, best road of action. You had mentioned functional range conditioning, right? What what is your like mobility rituals and drills look like? Like, what what are you already doing for this? Um, so I'll touch on the the peptides first. Too, I did use TB five hundred and BP one five seven to get at like a big jump from where I was. I don't know if you saw the pictures, but like my scapula was just like white right out to kind of where I am now. So nice. that was really well, that's helpful. Good. That's good news. Um, I, for my mobility practices, you know, um, controlled articular rotations, um, kind of running through head to toe and then, um, isolating certain joints, whatever I'm looking for and doing pails and rails drills. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Are, are you doing stim? Do you, when you practice acupuncture, do you use uh, stim at the same time? Um, do I stand? So I no, just no, broke no. up a little bit. No, do you use e-stim? Do you do mm -hmm. acupuncture with e-stim stimulation, electric st stimulation? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Have you, have you tried that? Have you tried use doing acupuncture with stim to the target areas before and after, uh, workouts? Not before and after workouts, but you know, recovery wise once or twice a week. I'm lucky that my wife is also an acupuncturist and she um, is like 13 years in the game. So she's got a lot of skills. So um, very big uh, help in that movement going forward, but not pre and post, which yeah. um, is really intriguing. It's a long, yeah. it's, it's a long, you know, if your workout's an hour, you're adding another 45 minutes, uh, 30 minutes to it. Uh, so you might need to shorten your workout. But the idea was, and this, this, the acupuncturist that I worked with, her and I worked together and came up with this protocol. I don't even know if this is one that people normally use, but the idea was to open. Now she said, if we can open the channels of energy, she, again, she spoke in Eastern medicine terminology. If we could start to open up those channels of energy and then you do your exercise, you're more likely to move the right way. And then when you, when I come back and work on them again, we'll maintain that flow of chi. And my explanation was you're improving connection with acupuncture. Then we utilize that new connection and then we strengthen that connection. And it was 
before and after every single time I train these individuals and I train these people two or three days a week. So two or three days a week, Forming better it was, ac yes, it was acupuncture, exercise, acupuncture. Now, do again. you guys, uh, okay, this is just, um, like, I, I feel like he's doing a lot of the right things. Yeah, you have totally. your, your background with acupuncture and FRC already, you're qualified as qualified or better qualified than I am to even help you in this situation. I, what I see as the challenge or is that you're progressing for everything you've talked about, you've continued to improve where you're having the setback. And, I, and I'm just guessing by looking Patience. at your physique is you end up pushing the muscle. You end up pushing wanting to be more of a jacked, big buff guy when you kind of need to stay on this course of rehabilitating yourself and being more focused on movement because you you've got plenty of muscle. And, and it sounds like that's, you want more of that. And understandably, I get it. But I think that's kind of what's keeping you from getting better faster because you're going in the right direction. You're doing a lot of the right things. The thing that isn't supporting you very much is probably, you know, front squatting or back squatting, you know, two, three hundred plus pounds and really pushing the low rep and heavy load because that's what's causing you to compensate a little bit. And I think that's what might be sitting with. That's just from what I'm getting right now, because it sounds like he's doing a lot of the things. Yeah. that I mean, Adam's got a great point yeah. because um, you have a, 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 a co compensatory pattern with it and you train with any kind of intensity. That's what's going to take over. And what we're trying to do is create a new neural pathway. And we have a unique challenge here where you have a nerve that is turned off or partially turned off. And we need to work with that nerve. We need to not work around it. Mm -hmm. So it may, uh, some patience is here. Now, now there's two scenarios here. One is you continue to improve and it's going to take some time. Almost nothing takes as long as uh, nerve rehab. Yeah. Like I, I've, I, there's nothing that is that takes longer than that. Okay. So it takes a long time. In frequency. Yeah. In my experience. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to have some patience there. The second thing is that you go so far and then that's it. And that's just the mystery. That's just the mystery with the with the nervous system is that, you, you know, if a nerve is damaged, sometimes you can get some of it back and, and then never the rest. And so at that point, you'll make a decision. Okay, well, this is what I'm what I'm what I'm working with. But based off of what you're saying in terms of your improvement, it sounds hopeful. Yeah, uh, you know, yes, yep. it sounds pretty. Typically, when someone's diagnosed with long thoracic nerve palsy, um, it's it, it's like you're you're not it's coming. Wrap. It's yeah, it's a wrap. You're not going to come back much. You'll get back a little bit, and that's it. But the fact that you're saying the nerve seems to be regrowing, you seem to be getting more connection. That's pretty positive. And so I would slow way down because you go above and beyond a, a particular intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the, you're just working around it now. Cool. Yeah, that's all really great. I mean, Adam, you're right on point. Uh, you know, one of my goals is to kind of gain a lot of lean mass and uh, get bigger so that I can then sit at around 200, but lean and shredded. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you're pretty jacked, bro. Forward. You're pretty jacked already. I've seen you. I'm looking at your pictures. Uh, you're, and it, I think what, what's happening because you're progressing and it's slow uh, and probably slower than you would like. But it, it, you're doing a lot of the. I mean, the, the direction you the, your background with FRC and acupuncture is already the yes. where I think all of us <laughs> would push you in that direction. So it sounds like between your experience, your wife's uh, background, you've got the you've got the tools. Yeah. You're doing the right work. Yeah, the the best the best tools that you have in your tool belt are acupuncture um, and correctional exercise. Yeah, FRC. And, and it would be yeah. it would be done very frequently, both of them. Yeah. I would do as much acupuncture as your body can handle uh, because I, I can't think of another natural yeah. method that's better for the nervous system. The only I know other, I'm preaching well, and to the then choir. maybe focus a little more on unilateral training. I don't know what your programming has been, you know, for a while, but like maybe load, you know, isn't as intense as you've been going. Uh, but like our symmetry program, I would probably, you know, highlight as an option for you to it, to go in conjunction with your FRC. And really the focus right now is the mobility and getting everything reestablished. But I, the, the one other thing that we haven't talked about, uh, the, the maybe kind of the elephant in the room is how this all happened. And, and actually, I don't know how much therapy you've done in that direction too. So I don't know if you've done anything like, you know, like a ketamine therapy type of deal, or you've gone down that rabbit hole of, trying to deal with the original kind of trauma that that caused this 
Um, are, have you done anything in that direction? I I have. Yep. I've okay. done um, some ketamine. I've oh, done yeah. okay. um, Sananga and uh, yeah. Combo. Yeah, bro. Which, yeah. You're doing a lot. You're doing a lot of the right things. I think it's just you. I think it's just a matter of time and being patient and, yeah. and, 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 and not allowing the the uh, the side of you that wants to be the big jack guy to steer your decisions and your training it just that, i think that's yeah, good. That's, that's the hardest thing <laughs> and if you were my client and right i feel there. like that's what we'll, all i'd be because you're doing a lot of the right stuff bro i mean you obviously know you're obviously a smart guy you've obviously been in this space for long enough to know kind of the right things and i think you're doing the right things i know we've all given you little tips of like some extra stuff you can do but it's just, I think it's just, even if you just do exactly what you're doing right now and just keep writing it out. Yeah. Gonna, Minus the trying to, you know, well, yeah, load it's, it's like so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and Calm you, down a little bit on that. And you have, you've, you've, um, I mean, you've ruled out other causes, right? Like you've ruled out viral injury, um, you know, impingement. <clears throat> like, what did the damage look like when they, when they looked at it? Um, he, you know, I have ruled out a lot of those and the endocrinologist that when he checked it and tested it, there was in the MRIs, like there was no damage to it. It's which is the now the mystery to it all. Like, how did it just completely shut down um, a virus uh, is something that they've talked about. Just it kind of got infected. And I, I mean, talking about Chinese medicine and um, the channels that that comes across, like it, it's right through the the armpit, which is the heart channel that runs through there. Right. And then prior to the conversation, I was flying in a wind tunnel because I uh, skydived quite a bit in the past. And uh, so the wind getting on the back of the neck creates an EPI that can cause, you know, pathogenic factors that come into the, into the body. So that's all like, uh, you know, yeah. Eastern medicine jargon, but you know, it's, it's the, it's the, yeah crazy mystery that I, I'm still trying to unpack for sure. Niall, one of the place to look, and I'm not recommending this because I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you, look into this. Look at the uh, the 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 neural effect of GLP-1 microdosing uh, and, and its anti-inflammatory kind of, you know, healing effect on the nervous system. Uh, terzepatide in particular. Just read up on it. See if you find anything. Yeah. Um, I'll throw in another fun fact that I learned during the recovery process of the four years, you know, till, till I found this is I was working with a naturopath doctor and, you know, doing, um, poly MVA ozone IVs, you know, oh, wow. uh, all, all the IVs trying to, trying to sort it out. This is when I had the, uh, peptides as well. Uh, I found out that I had like extremely low testosterone, like testosterone of an ADO 2.5 or whatever. And, wow. and that was, you know, pretty, uh, that kind of blew us all away. Um, and so then, uh, the journey of trying to figure out that and kind of go on yeah. natural ways. To well, are, you, are you on TRT now? Uh, so again, great question. I was on TRT and then, uh, with my ex and then I, we got, we split up and then mm -hmm. I, with my new, my wife now we wanted to have a kid and I was like, shit, I don't have any sperm. So um, I switched off TRT and went on clomiphene. And of course, the clomiphene uh, in conjunction with acupuncture therapies and herbs, I, I was able to nice. you know, build good. back up. Oh, good. You said the child. <laughs> well, nice. Good, well, good deal. Yeah, I think you're on the right path, brother. But I think it's going to yeah. take some time. Now, are you in our forum? Are you in our private forum too? Uh, Rob, the guy, Rob Reed, he, uh, yeah, he yeah. put me in when I had a, about the program. So awesome. okay, nice. I've been Dude. on there. Kind so, of you, you know, the, the only other person I feel that in our circle that could potentially add a little bit, but even, I feel like you're doing a lot is Dr. Brink. So if you haven't said hi to him in the forum, uh, shoot him a message. Uh, I mean, he's one of the most brilliant movement specialists I've ever worked with. So he's in there, uh, and maybe he has a few things to add that we yeah, we haven't already covered. So we'll see you in the forum, dude. Yeah, yep. And I just uh, I when I talked to Rob, um, I picked up the uh, symmetry program because oh, I wanted to try that out and try to balance the asymmetries. And I've kind of had a little dabble in what it looks like and the time timeline and stuff. So I'm super pumped to get into that. We're just about to leave to Italy. 
um, for a little three week vacation. So then uh, I'm going to start it when I come back and just take that three weeks and just stay, stay in touch with us, stay in touch with us in the forum. Then Niall hit us up when you get back and then we'll, we'll keep an eye on you between Dr. Brink and us and see what we can do. I have one last question. If would after symmetry would, um, advanced performance or maps, um, advanced, um, performance be a good one to jump into. Yeah. Or, or regular performance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You do all of that. Yep. Great. All right. Now thanks. We'll see you. We'll see you in the forum, brother. All right. Appreciate you guys' time. Thanks so much. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate you you guys. Thank you. I think it was a pathogen. I think strong. I, I strongly think there was a, a viral uh, a viral infection that was not identified, and and uh, if there was no damage to the nerve, no impingement, uh, there was, sounds like a, a, an, an attack on his nervous system through a pathogen. You don't, you don't think that there was an underlying issue that the amount of stress he was under just sort of the exacerbated pathogen. it? Yeah, the pathogen. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I think I think he's doing the right things, and the only but he's he's driving to build so much money i mean you saw his picture oh no right? you're right yeah he's yeah. jacked yeah. and yeah. i guarantee and i saw him doing front squats and yeah. stuff and he's pushing the limits yeah. he's pushing exceeding it yeah, yeah. so I, I bet he just every time he takes probably three steps yeah. forward he takes four back yeah. uh because of the he's desire to reach yeah, yeah if he just stays on this frc path and acupuncture yeah. but, you know, and patho- mo- pathogenic attacks on the nervous system can last a long time. You know, hmm. people will get like the loose function on one side of their face. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It could take a long time sometimes for that to come back. Sometimes it never comes back. And it sounds like that's what it was. And the stress just, you know, yeah, just the, the stress is, yeah, usually the trigger. Yeah. Our next caller is Rebecca from Texas. Hey, Rebecca. Good hey, to see you again. Good to see you. How, How you, you doing? doing? It's been a minute, huh? How y'all doing? Good, We're doing good. good. How can we help you? Okay. So I'm going to read my question because I'm a little nervous. I don't know why. All right, so I've listened to the show for about three plus years now. I visited the studio twice, avid listener, trainer. I currently started a new job uh, with the neurological audience. I'm currently working on personal goals and doing MAPS performance. But since my job includes lifting people all day long, uh, paraplegic, quadriplegic, I'm not sure where my volume and training should be. Um, currently my back, my knees, my traps are all taking the load and my body isn't happy. I want to progress personally. And I also want to be prepared for my job as well, giving my body an ample amount of rest that it needs. And so I'm just kind of lost here. Great question. And I, question. I, I, we've seen you a couple times, Rebecca, you've been pretty consistent with your workouts, correct? Yes, I'm very consistent. Okay, so here's here's let me I'll paint the picture, right? But consistent with your workouts, volume has been consistent, everything's going great, and then you just added new volume and new activity to what you're already doing. All you have to do is right. reduce account the, for it. All you got to do is account for it, right? You just got to reduce the volume and intensity of your workouts to balance things out. And the the places I would focus on are the places that you're feeling. Mm-hmm. I would do less intensity on my back workouts less intensity on maybe some of my leg workouts, depending on how your knee feels, until you find that nice balance. And then eventually what happens, your body starts to adjust. A weird thing happens with daily activity uh, over long periods of time, and it takes a long time, is that people's ability to adapt and recover from actually starts to improve over time. But you got to account for it in your workout. So I would just reduce volume and intensity on those areas that you're noticing are, are are struggling to recover. And the easiest way is just to back off sets. That's it. Mm. Okay. Well, my thing is, okay, so I'm lifting like 200 pound guys and I have to support their body weight. So I'm like, well, wouldn't I try to focus more on strengthening like the posterior chain? No. No, I'm trying to focus you're, on. You're doing that in your work. You're yeah. doing that in your work you're and you've that. been that's, working that's out the load and you've been working out for so long, so consistently that you're doing great. Mm-hmm. What'll happen is if you overdo the volume, on your posterior chain, you're going to get weaker mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and you'll yeah. find it more difficult to lift these people. So you got to reduce the volume on your deadlifts, reduce the volumes on your bent over rows, uh, your stiff legged deadlifts, um, because you're getting that volume through your work. Otherwise you're going to overtrain those areas. Okay. Um, I'm doing performance to do a Spartan race. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, yeah. For, so, Will this affect like 
what I'm trying to, my goal, my personal goal, like, should I just call it all off and kind of focus on my job? Because ever since I submitted this question, I've tried to like client myself. So my recovery, I'm trying to focus on recovery. My sleep is crap. Uh, my nutrition has gotten better, but, um, yeah, there's just a lot going on. Like my body's a complete mess. And, yeah. You got to back way uh, off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like the, not the best time to sign up for his partners. Yeah, maybe you got to back delayed. way off and then get your sleep in order. What's wrong with your sleep? I It's a chronic thing. I am also a mom of a five-year-old and a two-year-old. I've tried melatonin from the VA. I've tried weed, but I've got too attached to it. So I had to back off of it. I tried the net oil. It wasn't strong enough. So I did that in conjunction with magnesium. But the magnesium's with water, so it makes me go to the bathroom. And then I even tried, like, Brain FM. Yeah. And I, I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll be up for hours. And sometimes I'll even not be able to sleep until, like, 4 a.m. And I'm just, my mind is just going, going, going. And I just can't sleep. You know what one of the most so common, Rebecca, you know what one of the most common symptoms of overtraining is? <laughs> no sleep. <laughs> Insomnia. <laughs> Yeah. And I remember you now. Okay. I remember your background. Uh, you, I, if I recall, you tend to overdo it. Is that correct? Say that again? I said, I remember having conversations with you before. I think you have a tendency to overdo it, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> I'm a very driven person. Um, it's kind of like a blessing and a curse. But I just, I just go, 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 because I feel like I'm racing against time. I feel like someone's working out working me. I feel like mm. clients are out there waiting for me. I just, yeah, I re recovery is my weak point. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah, not, maybe, maybe maps 15. Maps 15 is yeah. a better program. Shift it up. That's your so, program. Maps 15. You're not going to listen to less us. volume. Yeah. I know you don't want to listen to us, but I think that's what you need to do. Yeah, it'll be structured. By the way, I'm going to tell you something right now. Nobody has ever won a race against time. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you will lose. Time it's is not, undefeated. It's undefeated. Yeah. So no, no, no. You, you got to go way, you got to scale way back. I remember now having some conversations with you, Rebecca. This is a chronic issue for you. And uh, your insomnia is likely due to the fact that you're overtrained. When can I... <laughs> go back to normal. Why? I mean, if how about you do mass fifteen and you enjoy see how the, you feel, see yeah. how you feel, and then maybe that's a sign that that's yeah. where you're supposed to be with everything you got going on in your life. I mean, you got two little kids, yeah. you got a new job that's physically taxing and demanding. In on a, in addition to that, you're trying to run Spartan while you're also yeah. not getting good sleep. It's gonna be every day, so it's like you're you're being productive. You're you're benefiting your body. Think of it more as like you're being productive by like reinforcing your body, let, allowing it to fully recover. Uh, you're you're doing yourself a disservice by just adding a bunch of extra volume. Yeah, you got to take care of yourself the way you take care of your kids, Rebecca. Okay, that's got it. That's hard to hear. Yeah, what no, I I do need to slow down. What are you what are you afraid of when you get when is a good Rebecca what what are you afraid of when you sit still and quiet uh, what makes you what's so what's so scary about that for you It's not and cuz I've heard this in the past few recent episodes it I don't think it's I feel like I'm scared of something it just feels like something can be getting done like I could be either making content I can be doing something for my clients I could be laundry dishes um calories freaking I could be doing something and it just feel like if I sit, it feels time wasted. That's what it feels like to me. But some, sometimes the thing that needs to be done is you got to let your body and your mind, uh, recover so you can do all the other important stuff. So there's something you're afraid of when you sit still, maybe it's your own thoughts. Maybe it's a fear of failing. Maybe it's a fear of being inadequate, not being enough. I don't know. But you're running yourself into the ground, and uh, it's just going to get worse if you don't take this advice and uh, and take a step back. Your, your sleep is suffering. You're starting to hurt. I think if you took a step back, you would feel a 10 times better. You're still going to be challenged mentally by it. I'm not going to lie. Yep. But physically, you'll start to feel a lot better. And then when do you go back? I don't know. I mean, you start to feel good. You can start messing with increasing activity and stuff. But uh, we're just talking about reducing your workouts. I'm not telling you to do the dishes and stuff. Uh, but I'm saying like your workouts, just do mass 15 for now. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. Stick with that and then follow up with us in the forum. I'm going to, do you have okay. mass 15? Do we, can we send that to you? 
I have MAPS 15. Uh, I'm in the forum. I have MAPS on a ball. I have all the, I don't have MAPS strong. All right, you don't need maps. I, I would send it to you, but I'm afraid you do it. <laughs> you follow. You follow maps. Ped maps fifteen. <laughs> you follow maps fifteen. Check back with us in about a month. Okay, yeah. comment and uh, leave us a message okay. in, in the forum. Let us know how things are going, and then maybe when you start feeling really good, we can talk about what else you could potentially do. But for now, do that. Awesome. Okay, I just want to like the normal thank you guys. Like I've been a trainer for about four years now. I lasted in a big box gym for maybe one paycheck and I just knew it. I wasn't meant to be there. If it wasn't for you guys training um, for the, the training forum for miss Ann, for all the whole team, Jerry, Kyle, everything they all do. Like I would not be where I'm at today. Like I'm, I'm looking for land for a commercial gym. I'm looking for um, more things to, to progress my business. And you guys have like progressed me five to 10 years as a trainer. Oh, like I, awesome. I would not be today as a trainer if it was not for you guys. So I just want to thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. We love you. I appreciate, awesome. appreciate you shouting out all the team members thank too. You. Yeah. We, we couldn't do we it without them. all them. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. Man. So thanks again, guys. Thanks, appreciate Rebecca. It. Appreciate it. We'll see all you right. in the forum. <laughs> I remember her too. So mm -hmm. do I. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. yeah totally. Super, super awesome uh, young lady. Super I, motivated too. Yeah. Did she, didn't, I did, get it. Super driven. Did she have like a, a military background? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She did, right? Yep, yep, yeah. Yep, okay. Yep, I yep. totally remember her. Yeah. 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 That's tough. Uh, one of the hardest things to do is to get a person like that to <clears throat> not do things. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess That's I want tough. to touch a little bit on yeah. the direction you were going because, uh, and I know you were asking her, like sometimes if people don't make the connection that it's like a scared or a fear thing, but there's, if you're running, there's something you're running. That's from. right. You're, yeah. There's something that typically. there's something that she needs to work on. Uh, and typically someone like that, it's like their fear, whether they realize it or not is to, is to be called lazy or someone think they're lazy. Something like that. Yeah. Inadequate right? or yes. not enough. And yeah. so this idea of I'll never be that person yeah. comes a lot of times. Like, so like someone has a childhood like me who had a, a maybe a, a stepdad who was never working uh, in and out. And so it's like my, of course, one of my greatest fears is to be that ver that. Right. So mm -hmm. I tend to go the opposite direction because I don't want to be that. So I pile on more work and do more things because yeah. I want to be as far away from that. A lot of times it's somebody like that who had sure. a childhood or something like that that makes them go, yeah, I'm chip on their shoulder. I want to be so different than that character that I overcompensate the other direction. As not realizing the, that you're not that character. Right. She obviously isn't. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle. That's different. It's called the Starter Bundle. That includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Kyle from Illinois. What's up, Kyle? What's going on, What's Kyle? Kyle? Hey, how's it going? Good. Good Great man. to talk to you guys. Thank you for having me on. I uh, first wanted to follow up from my last call. I called a couple months ago and uh, was struggling with issues with my sleep, waking up in the middle of the night, that type of thing. And you guys nailed it uh, in terms of overtraining. So you, you uh, put me on uh, uh, MAPS 20. And uh, since reducing my volume, I've been sleeping way better. Uh, so it made a tremendous difference. And uh, so you, your diagnosis was spot on. So Perfect. I'm at the point now where I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to think about, do I start increasing my, uh, my volume some and see how I handle it? Starting to, you know, get towards the end of the, the maps 20 here and trying to think about what's next. But my question today, um, is around bulking and cutting. I think I, uh, I'm probably over indexing on it. Um, but you guys, you guys talk about the difference between a, uh, you know, a bulk and a cut a surplus and a deficit being like three to 500 calories. Um, and you speak about it as generally being this sort of weeks long pattern. And so just in day-to-day -day life, I do my best to sort of approximate where I'm at in my head, you know, but, I, you know, most of the things that I eat don't have labels on them and no two sirloin steaks are exactly the same. And so I know that I'm, I've got to be 20% off at best and 20%, you know, over the course of a day is, is 500 calories plus or minus. So um, I guess my, my question is really two, two questions. How big of a deal is it if one day I'm, 
you know, I'm above one day and below, it kind of undulates day to day. Um, and what my, you know, I'm just tracking to make sure that, you know, generally I'm getting stronger over the long haul, the trajectory there is positive and that, you know, my weight isn't, you know, uh, going way too high, way too fast while I'm not getting stronger. Um, so just tracking those two objective measurements and generally just trying to do the best I can to be somewhere around where my maintenance is as best as I can feel it out. But I know that, you know, believing that it's super accurate is sort of an illusion, at least in, for, for me in my context. So um, curious if, if there's a big disadvantage, am I wasting my effort by not going into a, no, no, a no, weeks no. long bowl that I know I'm surplus no. every day, that side type of thing. No, no, Kyle, that's a great, it's a great way to do it. Literally. That's how, that's how I do it. It's a very healthy, good mm -hmm. relationship with food. And, and it, it it's, um, that's a that's a great way to do this. Uh, one of the easiest ways to just make sure that you're kind of staying the bulk is measuring what you are and tracking you getting stronger. It's a healthy place to do it. You want to undulate calories up and down. It's good. Um, I like to take a client like instead of like getting hung up on the being twenty percent off because it's steak and things like that. Is we all kind of have a. Um, similar breakfast or dinners that you always repeat back to. And when you're in bulk, it's like, you sure. know, I, I, I add a half a cup more rice and I eat uh set of eight ounces. I eat 10 ounces of meat. Like, so, you know, if you kind of have these similar things that you, you tend to eat, lean towards and you eat, you, when I'm bulking, I just know to, that's when I ate, uh, add that extra portion of rice and I have two more ounces of the meat in those meals. And that tends to like take care of that. And whether that's exactly 375 or 520 cal, that doesn't matter. It's like, it's definitely more than what I normally eat there. And then the, the reverse is true when I'm cutting, it's like, okay, now I'm going to go from the cup of rice to maybe like a half a cup of rice. And instead of the, you know, eight to 10 or 10 ounces, I'm going to go down to the eight ounces. And so it's a great way to kind of to do it. The, the challenging part is when you get a client who is like adamant about wanting to see results by a certain speed and time. And then it's like, and then we're also not tracking. Then I go, okay, well, if you want to be more precise and you want me to be able to tell you why we're not going up or not going down, then yeah, let's track, let's measure, let's weigh, let's get granular here. But if you're just trying to overall be healthy, fit, strong, build muscle, and you're in a quote unquote bulk what you're doing is a, is a, is a great way to do it. That's how I do it. Uh, I base my, my intake on, uh, health, gut health, strength, uh, weight. And then the mirror, cause I can pretty much guesstimate where my body fat percentage is roughly. You could use body fat percentage testing as well. And you just, you just kind of play with it and live your life. I mean, that's a great place to be. The more, the leaner you get, and the more specific you want your results with it, within a particular time frame, like Adam said, then you got to get a little bit more granular. Right? You know, if you get down to 7% body fat and you want to get down to five, well, now you're probably going to have to start tracking uh, because it gets more difficult. But the way you're doing it is perfectly fine. And if you're, by the way, if you're getting stronger, if, if you find yourself continuously getting stronger, relatively consistently, there's zero reason for you to change uh, and increase volume. So I know that was the first comment you made. Like, when do I go up in volume? Well, if you're improving, you don't. Yeah. Why? Why add more? Ride that wave. Well, yeah. Why why add anything more if you're improving your strength? You're already adding volume by getting stronger. Every time you add weight to the bar, you've increased volume. So there's no there's no reason for you to radically change your volume. You can change some of the exercises. You could add more lateral movements or rotation if you want. But that same that maps you know 15 protocol that that style. Uh, it works really great for a lot of people long term. So just keep repeating map 15. Just Keep going. You can absolutely. If, the if you're still getting if the stronger, results are, if the results are coming, hell yes. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing if, wrong. I mean, yeah. you could switch out some of the exercises if you want to add more rotation, more functional movements. You want to swap out an overhead press for a one arm bent press. If you want to add some lateral movement and take, I mean, that's you could start doing that as well. But that general, you know, kind of uh, skeleton, it's a great. If you're progressing, you're progressing. There's no reason for you to go. Biggest mistake people make is they're progressing. And they think, oh, if I do more, I'll progress yeah. faster. Yeah. yeah, that's that's almost that's like nine out of ten times the 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 wrong thing to do. Okay, okay, all right, and not a big deal if like there's no advantage to like bulking for some long period of time. When I mean long, by weeks, weeks long uh, versus you know, uh, I'm not losing out uh, no. by not doing that. No, in fact, undulating is so. Look at it this way, okay. 
if I have you know high calorie days, lower calorie days, but overall at the end of the week I'm in a surplus of calories, I'm still in a bulk. Versus always consistent. So in other words, if I have some days that are high, some days that are low, but at the end of the week it averages out to a 500 calorie surplus per day. That, in my opinion, is better than having an exact 500 calorie surplus every single day. I think it's better psychologically, and I do believe physiologically there are some benefits to not being so exact on a daily basis. I really do. I prefer to undulate. In fact, this is how I would coach my clients. Okay. Super helpful. Really appreciate it, guys. Do good, it, Kyle. Stay the course, Thank brother. You. I'm glad you're getting good sleep now. All right. Mm. All right sounds good. All right, Take Thank care, you. guys. Thank you. Overthinking. Yeah. Yeah. He, no, he, he, he knew it. Are going yeah, well. He's doing great. It. He said it, you know. Yeah, yeah he's doing yeah. good. Such a good point, though, to make that. Um, I, I feel like we had that on another caller, right, where you're doing you're doing good and then you want you think oh how soon yeah. can i do this and do that's like that <laughs> do i have to jump back you know like, i mean especially like so he's been lifting for a while right he's not like yeah. a new newbie lifter no. it's like man when you are progressing especially with that you know exactly you've been yeah. working out for a while to progress at all yeah it's, it's, a, a, it's a, such a yeah. huge win yeah, you know saying because right. well, most people spend a lot of time in plateaus and and not progressing so yeah. after five years of strength training exactly. that's what you're that's where you're living mostly. yes it's yeah you you live in you just a, vary it a little like you're talking about yeah. like add these other elements that might be not you know, existent in there, but that's it. Yep. Our next caller is Lawrence from Pennsylvania. Hold What's on. up, Lawrence? What's up? How are you guys? We're doing What's good. Happening? Happening. How can we help you? Um, just had um, some questions. Um, I've been recently kind of getting back on track. Um, I'm currently at 5'7", about 210. I'm down from about 225 starting weight. Um, I'm eating approximately when I'm at maintenance, 2,600 calories. I'm at a cut right now of about 2,050. Um, I've been back at it consistently for a few months now after about a year and a half of being kind of off and on since we had our newborn. Um, I guess she's not a newborn anymore. <laughs> and, uh, when I exercise, I tend to feel a little bit like lightheaded and dizzy, especially when I'm kind of pushing the tempo. Um, Often it kind of feels like my muscles are ready to go, but not the rest of me. Should I just be decreasing my tempo or could it kind of be something else? I know I have a tendency to kind of push the envelope a little bit. I know you have a sporting background. I wrestled growing up. Um, so usually I feel a little bit more comfortable in those higher intensity situations. Okay. Good question. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, if all of you isn't ready for the set, you're not ready. So you wrote in your email, my muscles feel ready, but all of me doesn't. That means you're not ready. But- yeah. Let's try to let's try to problem solve here uh, with the dizziness and the lightheadedness. Are you eating carbohydrates in your diet? Um, so I tend to go to the gym kind of first thing in the morning. It tends to be like the only time I have to go. Okay. Um, so I'll eat uh, I'll eat dinner probably around like six seven o'clock at night, and then first thing in the morning, like five six in the morning, I'm at the gym before I. Eat. Okay, and then do you have carbohydrates in your diet? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. Um, I like to have a pretty um, full diet. Um, I don't like to cut anything out. And then do you eat a whole, is it whole food based? Do you, is it all mostly food from home prepped yourself? Yeah. So like I, I do a lot of like ground turkey, um, white rice, uh, pretty simple diet, um, but a lot of carbs and a lot of uh, protein. All right. Sodium. Yeah, you're sodium. A little bit light on the fat so side. Sodium. Yeah, I think you need sodium, dude. Sodium? Yeah. Have you tested your blood like pressure? Before or after? Oh, both uh, all day. Both. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah. I would drink. I would have a nice uh, electrolyte drink uh, thirty minutes before the workout. Yeah. Uh, so you know, there. obviously, you know, listen to the show, so you know we work with LMNT. I would have a packet of LMNT with a big sixteen ounce glass of water. I would drink that thirty minutes before, especially first thing in the morning, and. You'll know right away, by the way, if this is the deal. Like yeah. you'll mm -hmm. you'll drink it. You can lim eliminate it, and then you'll not. go in the workout and be like, "Wow, that dizziness is gone." Uh, then you know it was probably sodium. You would be surprised how much, how little sodium you consume, even if you salt your food when it's whole, whole natural. Especially if you sweat in your workouts. Yeah. Like, do you do you, do you do you break a good sweat while you're working out? Yeah, I tend to. I I, I sweat a lot. Um, I like to also um, after the workouts. Sometimes I'll hit a sauna, hit the sauna if I'm not feeling too bad. Oh yeah. Um, but I sweat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> how are you with your rest periods uh, in between sets? So I've been running uh, MAPS Anabolic a little bit. So mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I'll do the kind of the time dress periods that you guys recommend. Um, yeah. So normally I'll do um, on the 
the first couple of weeks, that's the like three minutes or so. Okay. Um, when I tend to have more issues is like when I'm in the kind of minute to minute and a half kind of rest periods. So there's two kinds of dizziness and lightheadedness that you want to uh, decipher. There's the, oh my God, I'm so out of breath. I'm like pushing myself hard. So that's causing a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, well, yeah, that was a hard set, but I still feel lightheaded. That lightheaded feeling, the second option uh, in my experience many times, especially if it's a whole food based diet uh, or, and or a low carb diet, that's why I ask you that, mm -hmm. is because we need to add some sodium yeah, to the diet. Now, the fact that you used to be a wrestler, how long did you wrestle for? Um, I wrestled all through high school uh, since I was young, middle school, and then into college. Oh, bro, I tried yeah, you're, you're used to being dehydrated. Yeah, yeah, you guys are crazy. Uh, how many, you know, how, how did you make weight? Did you do crazy shit? Mm. Uh, yeah, I did. I, my parents used to want to kill me. I'd be like in garbage bags and sweat socks, oh, sweat suits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, get some um, LMNT. It'll not change, great. Yeah. Get some LMT. It'll change your life. I'm <laughs> yeah. telling you right now. No, you're get right. some LMNT. It will completely change Can't. your life. Especially with the wrestling background, like the most dehydrated people ever trained were wrestlers. Yeah. They're so used to 100%. just be, having no water yes. in their bodies. It's crazy. Yeah, I think that's what kind of just kind of uh, got me a little bit is I'm used to like when I'm going and I'm lifting and I'm feeling like kind of that high intensity, I feel good. And then as soon as the set ends, it kind of. Yeah. Like, Do you know why? Yeah, yeah. Your blood pressure drops. Yep. yep. So, and, and so you get that, that sudden drop in blood pressure and it causes you to get, you probably mm -hmm. see spots and stars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, dude, I, element T will probably, I'm, I'm going to order, order some elements, take it twice a day you'll, I, you'll, and you'll feel a difference. I would go Immediate. one packet before your workout and then one packet during your workout. And you'll probably be like, wow, what is this? This is like, this is crazy. You, you'll, you, you'll notice in your first workout a difference if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's awesome. it. Yeah. That's it, man. Should be an easy fix, yeah. brother. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right, I appreciate it, your time. Yep. Thank you. All right. Have you guys trained? You've trained wrestlers yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. It's, of course. The wrestlers are. You could throw anything at the them. The toughest <laughs> human beings I've ever. Seriously. The second would be like water polo for some reason. They beat the shit out of themselves. But yeah. wrestlers are like. I did wrestling practice in high school once. I did. I was a judo guy and it was like recreational judo. So it wasn't like super high competitive. I went to a wrestling practice and the freaking coach. It's. Closed the windows, turned up the heat, mm -hmm. and I was like, and I remember thinking, and, and myself, they don't drink water. Like, no, yeah, it's not just allowed like to. Constant. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, I was even aware of this, being like, this guy's like, he's gonna hurt people. We need to tell someone. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the only, it's the only sport I recall being around where they they have a throw up trash can intentionally, like for everybody yeah. to throw up in because it's just so normal in practice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's like it happened. Like we day. had we had moments in basketball when you're running sprints, that a guy yeah. threw up here and there, but it wasn't double like, days. Hell it wasn't week, normal. Lot, yeah, football. wrestling is battle. Dude. It's like all the time. No, that's it's like, like every, <laughs> every practice. Yeah, yeah dude, it's battle. Yeah, and when you're when you're used to that kind of feeling, which he probably is, and he yeah. put, you know. And if, you know, I'm going to tell like, look, if you're healthy, if you're otherwise healthy, not like your doctor didn't say you got issues and you got to watch your sodium. If you're otherwise healthy and you eat a whole natural food diet and you work out, the odds are your sodium is not high enough uh, for you. And supplementing with electrolytes, especially high sodium electrolytes, because most electrolyte powders don't have enough sodium, but Element T, they're the first ones to do it in the market. It's a thousand milligrams of serving. You take that, and the good news is this: it's one of the few things you'll know if this is what you need. You'll oh, take yeah. it. You'll, you'll within feel fifteen immediate to impact. Yeah, fifteen yeah, to thirty immediate. minutes, you'll be like, "Oh my god, this feels." So I didn't ask him, but I bet you he gets headaches from the sauna a lot totally. too. Sure, totally. Yep. All right, I know you like that episode. If you did, check this one out: thirty percent body fat for men. This is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from thirty to ten. What is ten percent body fat? This is when you have a visible. Six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.